Mother tongue. What is language really? Hello, my name's Amy Tan, a Chinese American writer. Recently, I was giving a talk about one of my books. It was going well, but then I noticed my mother in the audience. I realized that she'd never heard me sound so academic or use so much fancy grammar. My Chinese mother has never learned English properly, and people think her English sounds broken. As a result, they don't always treat her well. I also used to assume that because she couldn't express herself as well as most people, she must not be intelligent. Now, though, I see her English is just as vivid as any other form of English. This made me think about the English tests I did at school. I question if such standardized tests can or should test the beauty of language. Shouldn't we be judged on what we have to say, rather than how we say it? I considered my first book a success when my mother judged it so easy to read. Hi everyone! Welcome to English for You. I'm Pat. I'm Jiggling. And today we're going to explore some different ideas about the language or languages we speak. Let's get started with the first day of the article, and this is—I'll、uh, explain. This is first-person point of view, and it's not me. I'm not talking about me here, because the article says, "Hello, my name's Amy Tan, a Chinese American writer." So that's clearly not me. This is from the perspective of this person, who is a real person.、Mm-hmm. This isn't someone we've made up.、Uh, and she says, "Recently, I was giving a talk about one of my books. The word 'recently' is just some time in the past. We don't know exactly when. It's probably not a long time ago. We're not talking about years, and maybe not even months. It could mean a few days. It could mean a few weeks. It's not exact. Sometimes you have to get a bit of context to understand. But for this, all we need to know is it was not long ago. Here's a similar sentence. Jenny has recently started doing yoga to improve her health. So recently, 就是最近近来的意思哦，来自于形容词 recent。我们的文章中 recently 是副词，所以我们当形容词的时候可以说，比如说近几年来啊，英文就是 in recent years。比如说 weather patterns have changed in recent years。所以我们今天的文章呢，是以谭恩美这位女士的视角出发。她是一位美籍华人作家，她最近正在为她其中一本书在做演讲。So she was giving a talk, and she says it was going well. The talk was going well, but then I noticed my mother in the audience. The word audience means the people watching some kind of show. It could be we often use it for movie theater. That's an audience. It could be people for a play, people for some kind of music show.、It、could be people in a big crowd at a large festival or listening to a talk. Or if you're there listening to somebody doing some kind of performance, talk, show, music, whatever, then that is the audience. Now it's normally a singular noun. We say the audience stood up and. Clapped. We mean the whole group together. But you can actually use it as a plural if you mean different groups of people who came at different times or on different nights. If you, if a play says we had good audiences, that means during its whole run of however many days or weeks the play was on, lots of people came quite often to the play. But normally, if it's just one group of people in a movie theater or something, we just say the audience, not plural. Here's an example sentence: The audience stopped talking as the lights went down and the play began. 所以啊，老师刚刚讲很清楚哦。Audience 这个字啊，它当听众、观众，它是一个集合名词。所以如果你说一群观众，你可以说 an audience。不过如果是多群不同的观众，那么就是 audiences。老师刚刚有讲，那我们造一个句子哦。His first speech as president made a strong impression on his audience。所以一切都进行的非常顺利哦。对这个谭恩美来讲，他那时候在做演讲，不过他就突然他的发现他的母亲坐在这个观众。
奇耶。And this made her think, and we see I realized that she'd never heard me sound so academic or use so much fancy grammar. Oh, so academic 这个字就是跟学术有关的，通常就是 like very formal. So, 就是学术科目，我们就可以想学校，比如说学校的科目就是 academic subjects， 或者是学术的机构，你也可以说是一个 academic institution. Yeah, so if she was talking of being academic, she wasn't just oh yeah, I got this idea and I wrote about it.、Uh, She's talking about like proper technical terms for writing,、oh. uh, that kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. And she's using fancy grammar. Something that's fancy is kind of special. It's more than just common. You might talk about a fancy restaurant rather than just an average one. When we're talking about、uh, art in particular, writing, music, then something that's fancy is being done with a little more technical skill and style than you might normally think of. The example sentence really does explain it well. Books for children shouldn't use Use fancy writing or difficult words. So, fancy writing might mean very long sentences with many clauses, difficult words <laughs> with lots of syllables or that aren't common. Of course, if you give that to a child, the child won't understand it. It'll be too difficult. So, you use simple sentences, easy words, repetition, rhyming. That's what's in children's books. 嗯，所以 fancy 呢，对它本身就是复杂的意思，还需要很多高度技巧、哦。那不过我们口语可以当昂贵或很豪华或很高级的意思。老师刚刚有讲到 fancy restaurant， 这就是高级餐厅。比如说 Harry took his wife to a fancy restaurant for their anniversary， 或者是呢，我们 I think in your in you guys English you say fancy，、mm-hmm. do you fancy a drink？ <laughs> yeah， and of course the answer is always yes， yes of course。We have another one， um， which is to say you fancy。Someone, which is you, like someone? you have a crush on them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think、so、I've heard of that. that that's a, it's again. It, it, you, people really kind of stop using that after they leave school, but at school you would hear it a why? lot. Why? Why? Why do they? Because it's、using? it's kind of a, a young person's、like、teenage bratty, term. Bratty phrase. Not bratty, but just young. It's yeah. It's、oh, not, okay. You know, it's not an adult kind of. I am attracted to this person. This kid. <laughs> oh yeah, I fancy her. <laughs> He fancies her so much. I get it. I get it. 好笑 ，I think it's the same with the Chinese too. So we have seen that, hey, this Tan Anne, she said she suddenly realized that her mother, ah, has never heard of her using such technical or such expensive language in speaking. So she moves on to this thought about her her mother thinking, "Wow, she's never heard," or she's thinking, "My mother's never heard me speak like this before." To the question of language, and Amy Tan thinks or says, "My Chinese mother has never learned English properly." And people think her English sounds broken. Now here we're using properly to mean in the kind of right way, the official way. She's probably picked up a lot of English from listening to people, from talking,、mm-hmm. from watching TV or listening to the radio. But she's never gone to an English school and taken classes and and graduated from a school with a some kind of qualification. Like okay, you've learned English in this kind of formal. Proper setting with teachers. You've just picked it up. That's how some people, a lot of people, will learn English. And you'll say, "Well, that's not properly like a kid in a school. It still works, as we'll get into." Here's another way to use properly. If you don't follow this recipe properly, the dish won't taste right. So properly, 这边就是正确的或者是适当的。那它是来自于 proper 这一个形容词哦，它当然就是适当的。所以，比如说你吃适当的一餐，不要说都没有吃，那我们就可以讲 a proper meal。比如说 ，I've had cookies, but I haven't eaten a proper meal。我只有吃饼干，都没有吃正餐的意思。所以，唐安美的妈妈从来是没有正确的学过英文的，所以大家普遍就会觉得英文有点不太好。Hmm, and we see as a result, they don't always treat her well. Because that association, oh, you can't speak English well, so therefore you're not as smart as somebody who can,、mm. which is incorrect, and we'll get、right. into that too.、Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, this is something that Amy Tan thought herself. The next sentence is: I also used to assume that because she couldn't express herself as well as most people, she must not be intelligent. Now that sentence included today's language in focus, so let's check that out right now. So 
所以我们今天 language and focus 要讲的呢，这个句型就是和什么东西一样，它就是形容词、副词元及比较的用法。那通常都会表示比较两者有相同的特色或者是状况是一样的。所以，比如说第一个句子，我们可以看 the man's memory isn't as good as it once was。所以原来他的记性很好，现在已经没有那么好了。意思在做比较，跟以前做比较。那第二个句子，我们可以说 Laura can dance as beautifully as her teacher does after only two lessons. 所以 Laura 她现在跳舞跟她老师跳的一样好，才上两堂课而已。所以这个句型呢，我们通常也可以搭配成度副词，哪一些呢？像是 almost。Just quite nearly 这些字来修饰哦，差不多的程度。所以，比如说，我们可以讲 ，personal computers are nearly as common as televisions in American homes. 好，那我们就赶快进到下一个部分喽。我们要看到 intelligent 这个单词。The word intelligent means smart and clever. If you're intelligent, you probably have a lot of knowledge, and you're very quick at understanding new things. Uh, you're not somebody who needs to be explained it a bunch of times, and you just can't quite get the idea. You might say, for example, the intelligent child can say over fifty words, though he's only sixteen months old. So intelligent 就是一个人非常的有才智的哦。那么它就是形容词嘛，名词超简单哦。T 拿掉 ，C E 加上去就变成 intelligence。那所以高智商、中智商、低智商，我们可以说 high intelligence, average 或者是 low intelligence。我们直接在前加在它前面就好。所以比如说 John showed high intelligence from an early age。所以 John 他很早，大家就发现他的智商蛮高的。所以谭恩美啊有提到。说他妈妈英文不太好，所以大家就会普遍觉得，哎、欸，他好像不够聪明，因为他没有办法好好表达自己。就连 Amy 自己都这么想哦。But that's not true.、Mm. No, and of course, it's not her first language, so why would she be able to express herself、yeah. quite as well? And however, Amy Tan has changed her mind. The next sentence says, "Now, though, I see her English is just as vivid as any other form of English." Now the word "vivid" can just mean bright and colourful, a vivid dress. Somebody has a vivid hair colour, but it can also mean sort of interesting and producing a very strong, clear impression on the senses. It's if you read vivid words, vivid writing, the images in those words would seem to leap off the page and into your brain, so you can easily picture what's going on. A sort of a vivid dance routine would be. Full of strong movements and stuff you can kind of really see, so you could say something as simple as the vivid colours in this picture really make it stand out from the others in the art museum, or for the slightly more figurative use, the author's words painted a vivid picture of the beautiful mountains of Switzerland. So vivid 这个字哦，它就是有很生动啊、很清晰的意思。我们常常用这个字来形容一个人的想象力，所以你可以说 vivid imagination， 代表你的想象力非常的丰富。比如说 ，my vivid imagination often gives me bad dreams。但现在呢，好，这个 Amy 以前 she used to think that her mom's English。Wasn't isn't good,、mm-hmm. 但是其实呢，他现在已经不一样了。他现在觉得他妈妈的英文是非常生动的。Yeah, the idea being here that maybe somebody who doesn't know or follow all the grammar rules that you learn in school can still come up with these really creative, interesting ways to talk. Uh, even though those aren't what you might call like proper academic English,、mm-hmm. and that's certainly true in my experience. And as Amy says in the article, this made me think about the English tests I did at school. And the next sentence, I question if such standardized tests can or should test the beauty of language. Oh, I so agree with her because you know I used to hate all the English tests we had because、mm-hmm. they we don't really actually use them. Just in Asia, all the the grammar rules like we don't say I'm fine, thank you, and you, but we teach that all the time, and then we write that in tests and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen the I've written the English <laughs> tests obviously、okay. as part of the job upstairs. <laughs> Um, they're standardized. They're te- you know, do you understand when something should or shouldn't be past tense? <laughs> Now that could be important depending on what's going to be going on in your life.、Mm-hmm. If you want to study at a university abroad, you need to probably be able to have good enough English to understand the teachers, write good assignments that the teachers understand.、Mm-hmm. But if all you're going to do is actually like talk to people. 
like I'm going to understand what you say, whether you're talking, whether you get the right tense of the verb、mm-hmm. or end it in the right way. And sometimes the expressions that they come up with will be like, okay, that's actually more fitting than yeah, the proper way. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, 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 How we say it. Now, this phrase "rather than" means to say or have or choose one thing and not another, or, or it's used to contrast two things or two situations. So you might say, "I prefer to drink cold water rather than warm water." Means I like A and not B, or I prefer A to B. Or you can also say, "I prefer cold water over or to warm water."、Mm. 那这个 rather than 就是而不是，所以它就是来选择一个东西哦，像我们老师刚刚造句子这样子。所以语言应该是从我们讲的内容来判断，而不是从我们怎么说来判断，不是吗？ Yeah, it's not about do you express yourself in the correct Queen's English. <laughs> it's more like no, have you got something interesting to say? Good, excellent, I'll listen. <laughs> And so Amy Tan says, I considered my first book a success when my mother judged it so easy to read. Now that's in quotes because that's presumably what her mother said. Okay, so when my mother, her mother, saw this Tan Lemme's first book, she was like, "Wow, very simple to read." Tan Lemme knew that this book was successful. Which means that that book is therefore written in a way that somebody whose first language isn't English can still understand and enjoy、mm. it. That's good. So now let's discuss some of these ideas more in today's for you chat question,、mm-hmm. and it's going to be completely for you, really. Yeah. Do you ever worry that you'll be judged on your English? Explain your answer. Not anymore, but I have to be honest. Like when I first started learning English, my mom, my dad, they sent me abroad, and I've. I wasn't even fluent at all, and I was、mm-hmm. so afraid that they would judge me because I couldn't speak as well as they did. And but fortunately, all the people I met, they were like, "Oh, your English is so good. It's、mm-hmm. not your first language." So everybody was really nice. And later on, I kept learning and learning, and now I'm teaching people English. And I'm thinking, it's not.、Uh, don't be afraid to speak.、Mm. Just try to express what what, what you think. Yes, and、um, and a, and a lot、best. of people in native English speaking countries have grammatically, academically, very poor English. I know, right? Do you know? I have this American friend. He was like, "It's run, run, run," instead of "run, run, run," and I was like, "No, it's run, run, run." I will withhold judgment on the Americans and the <laughs> English they speak. I don't want to upset any of them. Okay. So let's park that right there. Now we are going to discuss more of these ideas tomorrow. So please join us again for day two. See you then. Bye for now. Bye. Vocabulary review. Recently, I've recently been reading a book about the history of Australia. This is because I will visit Australia next month. Audience. The band played all their famous songs that night and really pleased the audience. Fancy. One of the book club members used a lot of fancy words in order to sound smart. Properly. Do you know how to cook rice properly? If not, I can teach you. Intelligent. My little sister is very intelligent and always gets good grades in school. Vivid. Jimmy's vivid description of the sunset made us feel like we were right there, seeing the sky turn orange and pink. 智慧小补帖 Academic. Grammar. Standardized.